Hello and welcome. In my last video, I took a log I found on the side of the road and made it into a nightstand end table for the Modustrial Maker. Today, I'm super excited to show you the project we worked on together. So check it out. <laughs> oh yeah, and be sure to watch till the end because I have a scavenger hunt giveaway that I'm going to be announcing. I'm here at the Modustrial Maker's space. Ten Hun and Kipto are in the back painting their mural. And we were trying to get this log flipped over. It's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> this thing probably weighs like 350 pounds. So it's a pretty big log. Uh, it's got a big crack here. A couple other little cracks. We've cut around it just to get our line that we're aiming for here. About four inches deep. Now I just need to get it flipped over. When meeting new friends, be sure to have some thoughtful jokes ready. Yeah, that was awesome, man. That's got to be the biggest log I've seen in one job. <laughs> yeah, so this saw was actually really hard to use. It's six foot long and kind of floppy. It took us a while to get into some rhythm. One of the things we figured out is that you need to pull. If you try and push, it binds. <laughs> I was also horrified to see that I plumbered Mike and Cat. So that wasn't fun. Cat is another YouTuber. I'll have a link in the description of her channel. A long way to go. Turns out I never would have cut it as a real lumberjack. But these famous artists wouldn't have either, so it made me feel a little bit better about myself. Ow! I think I've done enough of this already. <laughs> this cut was really horrendous. Uh, we went off track and got crooked a few times, as well as making the cut slightly curved somehow, which made the saw really hard to move through the wood. <laughs> this log is kicking so my butt. Close. It took us two and a half hours <laughs> to get through this thing. I thought it might take half an hour. We came at it from a bunch of different angles. We kept cutting it in ways that we we're making more work for ourselves. And at the end of the day, we kind of screwed it up. So we, <laughs> we have to make two more cuts. This is insane. I don't even know if we can finish, but we're gonna keep trying, see what we can do. I'm about to do some painting on this beautiful mural. So it's distance from the wall, pressure that you push the cap, and speed at which you move the cap. All right. Here's a piece of wood, of course, very on brand. <laughs> oh yeah, look at him go! I got the jitters. I did it. All right, I took the chainsaw, went all the way around the log, and got about 14 inches all the way through. Now we're gonna take the big saw and cut the last little bit at the center of the log. It's so much easier. Thankfully, with the chainsaw and a little bit of practice, these next two cuts only took about 20 minutes each. This CNC machine was a huge help, but we still spent a lot of hours on it. Okay, it's taken forever, but we finally got this slab flattened using the CNC machine. Mike here has been a wizard with this computer. That was pretty awesome to see. We still have one more slab to do. Hopefully we can get that done tonight. We're done with the CNC for now. We've got the slab flattened. We're ready to go. Let's get this thing off of here. After talking back and forth about a few different design ideas, we both determined we would make coffee tables out of these slabs. So basically we just need to get them flat and get all the cracks stabilized. See, this is a really big crack. So in order to save on epoxy, we're gonna break up some of these shims, shove them in there, and that way we'll use a lot less epoxy. So we're using a black pigment, so you're never gonna see them, and we'll save some money. That is, unless you cut through the center of the crack while you're finishing the edge. Mix this stuff really well, scrape the edges, and stir for the full time recommended. Cool slab projects we're doing. Austin's going to be doing a pretty cool table with one of the slabs. Since I had only poured epoxy twice in my whole life, it was so awesome having Mike there to coach me through it. Alright, we got the first round of the epoxy poured. We got a long ways to go but we're sealing it up and uh, making sure we don't have any big leaks coming out of here. So far, so good. But the real opinion I'm looking for, how do you think I did? A freaking plus, man. <laughs> Knocking it out. Awesome. All right, we'll come back for round two. So the epoxy we were using wasn't necessarily for really thick pores. So it led to a little bit of a problem, but Ooh. not a huge one. So this is what happens when you pour the epoxy a little too thick. Reminds me of the uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Texas tea. Okay, so this has been drying overnight. All we gotta do is heat this up and scrape it off, and then we can pour the last little bit of epoxy. 
It's been a few hours. The epoxy is totally dry. Time to take the tape off and get it on the CNC. Give it a nice skim coat to flatten it all out again. All right, we just flipped the slab over and there's a little bit of leaking where it formed to, to the mat here, but that's not a big deal. We're gonna pull all this tape off and then we're gonna put it back on the CNC. And to clean my mat. I'll probably put the top this we can the chisel CNC. off. This is not a chisel. This is a just belt sand that bump, bump off. Oh yeah, see look at that. That's like rubbery. See how see how easy that comes up now? Look at that. We ended up trimming off a little bit more with the CNC than we thought we would because the wood was so porous. The epoxy soaked in from the top. Yeah, so these, these big cracks are actually looking really good. The problem is the center of the log is a little bit soft, so there's been some fairly significant tear out here. We're just going to have to fill this with epoxy later and then sand over it. So I think what's kind of interesting about this project is that we started with the same log, the same epoxy, but at this point they're going to go in very different directions. And so you guys got to go check out his channel if you haven't already, Modustrial Maker. I'm going to have a link in the description. So what's going to happen with your slab? <laughs> it's going to be turned into a 1000 theme table. Really cool epoxy pattern, taking inspiration from his art. So should be cool. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. So we've done a ton of work to get this thing to this point and I've got to get going. So we're going to load this up and finish it off back in Michigan. Thanks so much for having me out. It's been Dude, awesome. This has been, been so much fun. I am very happy that Ten Hun introduced us and I've seen what he's planning to do with this when he gets back. So you guys got to keep watching because it's definitely going to sort of flip Live Edge on its head and be very cool. Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with this thing. This thing is really soft in the center, which is gonna cause a problem structurally with some of the leg design I was working on. And the slab isn't quite as big as I thought it was when I first did my design. I always wanna be coming up with something interesting from a design standpoint. I don't wanna just leave the live edge slab. I wanna to continue to try and be innovative and come up with a creative solution. 18 inches is the diameter of the circle I was looking at on my computer. Now, the sides of my hexagon are 18 inches, so I should be able to measure 18 inches from point to point. That'll give me the geometry to lay in my hexagon here. Now I'm looking at this thinking I might be cutting off too much wood with this hexagon. That's quite a bit of material cut off here. I think it would still look cool. I don't know. So I'm actually feeling really nervous right now. I'm at a point of no return and the old log, 80 or 100 years old maybe. It's from the Modestrial Maker. It took a long time to cut this and get this far. It just feels like there's a lot riding on this one and I don't know what people are gonna think of the design. Am I cutting off too much? Should I have left the live edge? So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really nervous about it. I feel like I just need to go for it and make a decision and move on. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> that actually looks pretty dang good. I stayed off the line quite a bit here, um, just in case, but there's some cool asphalting happening here. Green looks good. I'm trying to transfer my hexagon to the other side. Bring this and line it up here, mark it. Now once I get a few of these marked out, I'll know where the corners are on the other side. I know you're thinking there's probably a better way to do this, but I did try and use my saber saw and it really damaged the wood and was not kind to it, so I ended up using the handsaw. And yeah, I, ha I had to do this 12 times uh, because of each six sides, uh, top and bottom. But it was a good workout. <laughs> here and they're very visible and there's a bunch of holes from where the epoxy got all bubbly uh oh better call Mike and then uh, I guess because I was scared I didn't cut all the way up to the line so I had to cut all 12 edges again 
So I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I think the angles are looking really good. The grain is coming out. There's starting to be some more of the spalting showing and these epoxy cracks look really good. I'm actually really excited about it, at least the edges. I'm thinking I might do something a little bit different at the center because it's just too soft and it's got some really dark marks and things like that. I don't know if it's in line with the clean lines and the modern angles that I'm going with. Now my original design was to have this not at a 45 degree angle so that from this line, the angle would meet this corner down here. And I wouldn't actually have these little angles here. If that were the case, then I would have cut off all of the live edge, but that's not the case. I did it at a 45 degree angle and it actually looks pretty good, but I still have some live edge in some of these different areas showing up. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with these. I ended up leaving some of the live edge corners, you know, just to pay homage to the original tree. After talking to the Modestrial Maker, I think the only way to fix this is to this guy to cut these wood pieces out, create a void here that I can fill up with epoxy. Now, I'm gonna make some simple legs out of one by sixes. I also had this crazy idea to make this tension structure to use as part of the legs. I'll explain a little bit more about that later and it looked a little different than I first thought it would, but I think it turned out really cool. Okay, I got the hexagon cut out and it's not too bad for not knowing what I'm doing. In order to attach the wooden legs to the slab, I made these brackets out of steel angles. It's made for a super strong joint and really simple too. Now I got that big uh, six foot long saw on Amazon so you can check out my affiliate links below and get one for yourself even if you just want to put it on the wall for decoration. I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. And don't forget to stay till the end of the video so you can check out the giveaway piece. I think that'll do. I wanted to interrupt the progress really quick just to ask you guys, what should I do with this thing? This is the top of the log that we cut off. It's kind of junky. I don't know what to do with it. And it's kind of narrow because of the poor cuts we made. Maybe only an inch thick once I get it flattened. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what should I do with this thing. What I'm most worried about with this structurally is that when I put a force straight down on this leg here, it wants to rotate and these screws right here want to rip out. And because this wood is so soft, I want to do something about that. So I designed this piece here that once I tie this piece into here, it's holding this leg back from tipping. I think it'll make for a stronger table and it'll give me peace of mind. What do you want me to make? A club. A club for what? To attack pieces. Have a nail sticking out of the top. Okay. Yeah. How's this? Good. There's no nail on it, but that's too dangerous. Probably. So why am I painting this? It's super soft, it's kind of rotten. It's got all this black stuff shining through that it's gonna get a lot darker if I were to do just an epoxy layer. I'm not a big fan of how the top of this looks, so I wanna cover it. I used wood filler instead of epoxy because I didn't wanna wait for the epoxy to dry. So I'm just gonna paint over it. I hope that'll look good. But if not, I can always sand it down and try something else. Well, now the paint is dry. I think it actually looks pretty cool with the grain showing through. So I just gotta do a little bit of sanding. I'm happy with it. Hopefully you're not too mad that I <laughs> painted over this and uh, we'll keep going. As I said earlier in the video, I'm not, not an expert at uh, using epoxy. So I just kind of did my best. I know there's other videos on YouTube that would do a better job showing you how to do this finish. Uh, I just really wanted something solid and, and hard to compensate for the soft wood. So I was thinking about painting the legs gray like the top. What do you think about that? No, most people say gray is colorless. This side should be red if you were giving it to 100 and this side should be blue. Well, I'm not giving it to 100. 
Now, I know most of you are going to say these legs are colorless, but I think the gray works well. Now, I scrapped the original wood design for this because it was too bulky, and I think the rope turned out looking really slick. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. What do we got? I wanted to get your reaction. You haven't seen any of this no. since I left your studio in Chicago. So, you ready to see it? Yeah, man. Yeah, let's see it. All right, let's do it. Woo! Dude! Dude, you did the slab justice! Yeah. Oh, that is, those facets are so, so precise. How'd you cut them? That's a really thick facet to cut. You'll have to watch the video, man. All right, I will, I will. Dude, that looks so nice. What did you do for the top to paint it? Is yeah. it paint or is it stain? Watch the video, man. Go watch the video. I'm just so curious, <laughs> I can't wait. You gotta watch <laughs> so it. So curious. I need those views, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and you know what else you could use is your sub, because I'm subbed. You've been telling me about all the stuff you got in store. So, all you out there, sub to this guy, because not only is he a great woodworker, he's got some cool videos, he's a good guy too, so. Awesome, it's been awesome working with you. Thanks for giving me a chunk of your log. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about dropping the logs. Austin, dude, thank you for the table, I love it. Dude, it's not for you. I'm just filming my glamour shots, man. This one, this one's not for me? No, you gotta keep Modustrials. I thought everything on your channel was for me. Get out of here, man. I'm trying to film my glamour. Okay, I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching the video. You guys are awesome. And thank you to Mike, the Modustrial maker, for inviting me out to work on this project with him. Guys, if you haven't seen his channel, he's got a lot of awesome furniture, a lot of awesome builds. Go check it out. Link is in the description below. But what's the scavenger hunt giveaway I was talking about? In my first video, I made a birdhouse out of a log and I made these boards. This is the first board I ever made from a log and I actually gave it to 1000 and he painted this portrait of me. I call this Arnolf and this has actually been in every single one of my videos except for the first two. So if you wanna win, all you have to do is find Arnolf in all five videos except for my first two and comment below the timestamp which he appears in each five videos. I will randomly select one person and send them an awesome surprise. You won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Now find a log and build something beautiful.